Just because you have a gun does not mean that you are safe. I'm Kirsten Joy Weiss, and in this episode, we're gonna talk about the three layers of self-defense that can create confidence, proficiency, and peace of mind. Now, the three layers of self-defense kind of a trinity of fundamentals. They are all about prevention and reaction. They all play off of each other. One is good, two is better, three is best. Are there more? Yes, but these I feel are really the core of self-defense principles. Layer one, awareness. Be aware of your surroundings, of the people around you, and of the details around you, including crossing the street. I don't know what it is about this day and age, but people do not look both ways when crossing the street. Uh, I went to kindergarten. It's kind of basic, but people don't do it. Sometimes they have headphones in, sometimes they have their cell phone, but other times I just watch somebody and they're about to walk right in front of my car and they have no excuses, no headphones, no cell phone, no nothing. Then they're halfway across the street and they're like, oh, oh crap, there's a car. <laughs> and good thing that I'm aware because otherwise they'd be that is not situational awareness that is not what we want and the cell phone is the enemy of awareness now i get it we're all on our cell phones we live in a cell phone culture and world but when you're on your cell phone be aware of your peripherals be aware of where you're at and the situation around you don't just zombie out to your cell phone quick story you're gonna love this my friends and i like to go to walmart and play some pranks uh, social experiments <laughs> We pick the biggest guy in our group and he goes up to somebody that's zombied out on their cell phone and he makes the biggest monster face and just like kind of yells in their face and blah, and they don't even react. I thought that the first one was a fluke. I thought, well, oh, maybe this person's just really intent on, I don't know, watching Justin Bieber on her phone or something. But it got creepy because it happened over and over again. They don't even react, even if you snap in front of their eyes. It is disconcerting. <laughs> don't even have the natural bodily reactions to that. So I highly recommend training your situational awareness, especially when you're on your phone, because you're probably not that aware of how much you tune out the world around you. We all need to work on it, but this is definitely an important thing to work on. One last tip in this category is look confident, look alert, be engaged with your surroundings, especially when you're walking alone. That's gonna prevent and help you react to any situation that happens. Layer two, Security habits. Just because you feel safe doesn't mean that you are safe. There's a lot of places in the US, contrary to popular belief, that are extremely safe. In fact, the US is one of the safest countries in the entire world. A lot of people don't lock their doors, they don't lock their cars, they leave their cars running when they're jumping into the store. But just because you might live in a safe area, that doesn't mean that you don't practice security habits. What if somebody from the outside who's not all that up and up comes to visit? or Say you go abroad or to another location in the US that might be a little bit more dicey, like Chicago or something. Having these security practices already trained will benefit you. These security habits are about prevention and creating more time to react in case it's necessary. Some quick, simple suggestions just to get you started. Of course, there's more, but here's a few. Have your keys ready before you get to any door, your car door, your house keys, whatever it is, you're not fumbling at the door, have them ready ahead of time to open up that door and just go right in. When you get into your home, lock the door behind you so somebody can't just follow you right in. Another thing is consider a security system. Now, before I go further, I gotta let you know that I've never liked security systems. They're usually annoying. I tend to set them off way too often and it's embarrassing. I'm not a fan usually, but I found a security system that looked promising and I went and I tested it and it's really easy to use. It even has little key fobs like your car. And I allowed them to sponsor the video because I tested the system is Simply Safe and here's a little bit about that. The Simply Safe service is incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. Your home is professionally monitored 24 seven and if anything happens, they'll make sure the police and authorities get called. They have really thoughtful features beyond the basic security system. I'm sure they have motion sensors and entry sensors and all those important things. But they also have water sensors 
and freezing sensors, and even the smoke detectors are hooked up to the central hub. They thought of every single threat a home could possibly endure, and they made something for it. It's also easy to use, so check out the description and follow the link simplysafe.com slash kj W to learn all this and a whole lot more and I truly hope that this benefits you and your family. Continuing on, you can choose motion sensor lights around your house, trim the bushes around doors and windows, and a very important tip that a lot of people don't think about the second you get into your car. Lock the doors. Too many things have happened with unlocked car doors. Don't let it happen to you. Just lock those doors, make it a habit, and all these habits create time to react and also even prevent terrible situations, crime, etc. If you form these security habits, they'll benefit you for the rest of your life. Layer three, training, both physical and mental. Now the first thing you gotta look at is martial arts, real ones, because you don't always have a gun, let's face it. There's a lot of places where a gun is illegal or countries that it's illegal and you can't always carry a gun. So the next best thing in lieu of that is martial arts. And I say real ones because uh, there's a lot of self-defense courses in the mall or something like that. You can go take and then a lot of people think, oh, I'm like Angelina Jolie, I'm awesome, I can handle anything. No. That's not the case. And a lot of times people are like, well, something's better than nothing, but not really, because if they train you poorly and gives you false confidence, then something is worse than nothing. So you wanna make sure that your martial art is actually a good one. Now, I've trained in Japan under some grand masters, and I would love to recommend those martial arts to you, but there's not a lot of places that train it here and train it well. So the next best thing that I can think of, jujitsu. Go check that out, see if it's the right art for you, and see if you're comfortable with that, and then train it. Next, gun training. Now this should be obvious, I shouldn't have to say this, but for some reason I do. If you have a gun, doesn't mean that you're automatically great with a gun. No, you have to go and train with that gun. A gun is just a tool. It's only as good as the person behind it. Just like any of these tips, it has to be trained and has to be put into action. So go to a shooting course and train the fundamentals. It does not have to be a self-defense course right away. Make sure that your fundamentals of shooting are good. That is so essential because everything, that's the foundation, everything can be built upon that. And it's so important not to just jump up to how quickly can I draw. No one cares how fast you can draw the gun if you can't hit the target. So make sure you train those fundamentals first and then move on from there. I can't stress enough, the gun is the best tool for self-defense, but you gotta train with it. Okay, I saved the best for last, mental training. If your mind isn't ready, then you're not ready. It's as simple as that. This comes in many forms. Basically, you have to visualize what you're going to do before it happens. Train the confidence and willingness to do what it takes, no matter what, to protect innocent life. And you might assume that military veterans are ahead of the game. Now, in some ways, they might be, but this is a different thing. Those military vets are not trained for civilian situations. Every situation is different and you need to train your mind for each situation. A military guy is used to being out in combat with a team around him, but then he's in a civilian situation, he's walking down the street and he's got a whole new set of of rules and visuals. So you're walking down the street. Is it legal to protect yourself if somebody attacks you? Is there somebody behind the attacker? If you're in your home, okay, now it's your home. You're sleeping, you're calm. Somebody breaks in, you have your wife or husband by your side, you have your kids in another room, you have your pets in another room. The emotions, the emotional burden of that and the panic that can potentially set in is massive. You can make bad decisions if you're not already mentally prepared for it before it even happens. Happens. If military vets have to train this, then of course the rest of us do as well. In some cases, aggression helps. You want to be the attacker, you don't want to be the victim. For women, a lot of times, most women are trained not to be aggressive. And so I've trained this principle to be aggressive. I don't have a problem when it's for somebody else in my life, friends, family, whatever, I'm very aggressive if somebody goes after them. But when I'm asleep at night, 
If you're like me, you're sleeping in your bed, you hear a bump in the night, you wake up. What's the first thing you do? Well, the first thing I want to do is just go back to sleep. I love my sleep. That's an admission from me. I've had to really train this. Like, whatever, take my TV, I don't care, it's fun. Just, just let me sleep, whatever, just let me sleep. This <laughs> is not good. If you hear a bump in the night, coming from a sleep, the first thing you feel is comatose. You feel like you can't move. Second thing you feel is usually fear. Oh crap, what was that? You need to instantly snap into that aggression. I get vicious about it. Instantly snap that, hey, I wanna actually sleep and just go to sleep and not move. No, I change it into aggression. Who the hell would break into my house, break into my kingdom, have the audacity to be here? Oh, they're in trouble. Uh, yeah, that works for me. And that keeps me moving. That helps me to move in order to do what I need to do, get my gun, get my cell phone. If you're not a very aggressive person, train that muscle. And that's a mental game, it's an emotional game. If there's something else you would like to add to this, feel free to leave it in the comments. Again, this is not all there is to it, but this is a great trinity of fundamentals that'll get you started. I hope that you put these into practice. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and stay sharp. <laughs> la la la. The gun is the best self-defense tool you'll ever find in the entire world. Unless you have Chuck Norris, maybe like in your pocket. Boop, boop, boop.